Hello everyone, and welcome back to Cook Serve Delicious 2. Um, so off screen, I got to level 48. I unlocked a few new restaurants, which we're going to check out in this episode. Um, and I unlocked three new food items, and also a load of money as well. <laughs> Let's see, the first one I unlocked was, um, alphabetical. Sizzling fajitas. A staple of Tex-Mex cuisine, sizzling fajitas represent one of the greatest accomplishments in the mid-1960s. Uh, Efforts to improve relations between the United States and Mexico. In December of 1966, U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson and Mexican President Gusta Gustavo Diaz Ordaz met in Ciudad Acuna, Mexico, to tour a U.S.-Mexican dam and bridge uh, which uh, was being constructed. During this meeting, the conversation between the two leaders soon turned to food. With Johnson being a fan of meat and Ordaz being a fan of heat, the two pondered a dish that contained both heat and meat. The Mexican trade deal was passed by the U.S. government in 1967, a sam uh, and sandwiched in between the legal text of the trade and shipping route on page 1412 contains the first known printed recipe of sizzling fajitas. <laughs> I just want to check something real quick. Um... Okay. I noticed that the last episode was, like, way too quiet for some reason, and I I think I fixed it. I think we have made some Estebans before. So, oils, onions, green, red, yellow, shrimp. And there's no second page. Oils, onions, green, red, yellow, shrimp. Right, give me something else. Oh, whoops! So it seems like you add all of that and it's either beef, chicken, or shrimp. Is there anything you have to do after it cooks? I kind of forgot, it's been a while. I have never seen a beard like that, that looks very odd. <laughs> no, there is not. Interesting. Uh, the next thing I unlocked was a chopped brisket sandwich. Before the invention of chopped brisket sandwiches, whole brisket sandwiches were sold by a small sandwich shop in um, Odessa, Texas. Although whole brisket sandwiches were a successful and enormous size, the meat resulted in approximately 90% of the customers leaving with unhinged jaws. While the owner of the sandwich shop originally cared l a little for this problem, he later became concerned that the screaming was scaring away new customers. <laughs> A sandwich related pl uh, pragmatist at heart, and the owner ultimately decided to chop the brisket up before including it in the sandwich. The move was a huge success, and as a result, screaming went down 85%, with the remaining screaming caused by unrelated issues. Oh my god. I think we've made this one, actually. Yeah, it requires a, um... It's basically the same as, like, a lot of these meats. You inject it, you season it. And then, I think once it's cooked, um, you need to, uh, you need to, uh, it's like, it's like a, it's like a normal sandwich of a top bun. But you can put either spicy sauce or barbecue sauce on it. Yep, like that. Okay. That one's easy. And also, I was really excited about this. Banana Foster. This is my favorite item in the original, for those of you who don't remember. Banana Foster is a dessert somewhat similar to, the, to a banana split, as it is made of banana and vanilla ice cream. Before the ice cream is added, the bananas are cooked with a sauce made from butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, dark rum, and banana liquor. Afterwards, more alcohol is poured on top of the um, and then ignited, after which the entire concoction is then served over vanilla ice cream. Created right in 1951 in New Orleans, when the city was dealing with the um, importation of more bananas than its citizens knew what to do with, the Banana Foster was one of the few experimental banana-based dishes made during the era to survive the Korean War. 
It is widely believed that the popularity in survival of the dish during the war is due to the fact that it became very closely associated with the Naz themselves during an episode of The Very Late Show of um, Marvel's Stetson. During the Celebrity Chef guest segment, Chef Sly Hindel prepared the Banana Foster dish in front of an audience, and upon seeing the dish go up in flames, Marvel exclaimed, That's bananas! The audience went wild, and the catchphrase immediately entered the lexicon. Marvel was constantly hounded by fans, wanting him to say the famous phrase, which friends say infuriate him to no end. It is believed that Marvel be, uh, became very bitter towards fruit by the end of his career, and upon retirement in the late, uh, in late 1964, became a... Uh, Meditarian, or a person who only eats meat before he died slightly later in the same year. Oh my god. War meats, dessert classic, rich dish, all time classic, pesty food, quickly perfect, super menu rot. Okay. Yeah, I, I do hate how they changed it in this one. Like, you had to time that in the original, it was a lot more fun to, to try and like do perfectly there. That fire effect, like, looks really out of place for this game, too. But, like, in a good kind of way, if that makes sense. That- you lighting a banana foster was actually in- it was actually a trailer shot, too. So I think they knew how crazy it looked. <laughs> hmm. We have a lot of money, too, and a lot of junk mail, which I may or may not read later. Um... Put these three on. What does this do again? I think I will, um... Bring all this up to level two? And then I'll spend the rest of my money on food. Let's get a new side and maybe a new drink too. I don't think we have many more drinks to unlock. Um, I mean, yeah, a new side. Only my pantry, for sale, side dishes. <clears throat> All right, what else we got here? You know, I am genuinely, like, I genuinely want to try making Mexican fried rice in real life. Like, I don't know, like, cilantro and tomato sauce? I'm typically not a fan of tomato sauce, but, like, I like a little bit of it in my food. And, like, putting it in rice? Like, you just get a little bit of a taste there? That doesn't seem that bad, actually. Mexican rice was first, uh, first cooked by Carmen Sara in her hometown of Salentilo. Uh, in, in addition to being an acclaimed chef... Sora was also a secret member of the Slaying sen uh, Senoritas, a vicious gang that was both feared and respected in Mexico in the, in the 50s. As Sora routinely used her restaurant's kitchen for executions, her freshly cooked rice was often soaked with the blood of her enemies. Fearing patrons would become suspicious if they saw um, red discoloration in their rice, Sora decided to mix tomato, garlic, and onion with her rice to ensure the vibrant red color would always be justified. Sora's di uh, dish was a huge success, and the resulting financial security allowed her to pursue what she enjoyed most, assassinations for large sums of money. Sora later sold her restaurant to a more family-oriented uh, owner, and although police pursued uh, Sora in her later years, she was never apprehended. She later recalled her culinary and murderous exploits in the autobiography of Rice and Men. So it's a trashy food. T-R-C-L. Yeah, we've made this before. <laughs> I like that dish a lot. So, Mexican rice. Only one item that requires a holding station so far. What about sausage links? A little known fact about the sausage links is that they were inspiration for the German fairy tale Rapunzel. In, in 500 BC, a young Greek chef climbed up an abandoned tower, searching for a new place to cook sausages, feeling as though the marginally thinner air would provide a better environment for the sausage casing. 
The cook set to work. It was only when he, uh, he finished cooking, however, that he realized he was unable to climb down. Without the second thought, the cook tied the sausage links to a nearby pillar and his... <laughs> down the tower, suffering only minor sausage-related rope burns. As the years went on, the story was passed around only to emerge over 2,000 years later in a fairy tale compilation book. When the uh, while the premise uh, remained the same, the cook had been replaced by a young woman, the sausage of hair, and the cook's potty mouth with an ethereal singing voice. Simple food, trashy food, micro-servings. I think that's our first side that suffers from micro-servings. Oh, does it only make three? Also, wait, look, those sprites... Who has five whole sausages as a side? How small are those sausages? <laughs> are they like those like small breakfast? Oh, four. They must be like those small breakfast sausages. That's the only way that makes sense to me. Let's get a drink. Iced tea. We've made this plenty of times. While hot tea has been enjoyed for over 5,000 years, iced tea is a relatively recent phenomenon, becoming popular only after the invention of commercial refrigeration and the resulting abundance of ice in, um, and month-old leftovers. Iced tea can be sold both sweetened and unsweetened. However, countries where uh, which were experiencing hardship when iced tea was first introduced typically prefer sweetened tea. This is true through Thai, Indonesian, and Filipino iced tea, which all became popular during the, uh, during 97 during the 97 Asian financial crisis. Some critics suggest that this rule of thumb is useless and sweetened iced tea is popular in the southern United States. Many locals, however, ref uh, refute this claim, suggesting that it is, there is nothing easy about living in Arizona. <laughs> okay, I know some friends from Arizona. It seems... It's probably like one of the closest you can get to hell on earth in the United States just because of the heat. <laughs> I've actually been there once to see family. Like, it is... As a Mainer who's typically has to do with, like, 80 degree weather at the very most, it was, it was brutal. We did go golfing, though. It's the only time I've ever went golfing in my life, and it was a lot of fun. Fresh Lemonade. Indians created an uh, early version of lemonade called Nimbu Pani, which translates to lemon water. I mean, that is what it is. And reportedly tastes, uh, tastes as bland as it sounds. The first written evidence of lemonade, however, comes from Egypt around 1000 AD, which was uh, a wine made from lemons, dates, and honey, and was given the uh, to peasants to help ease the burden of their 23.5 hour workdays. The, dr uh, the drink was popularized in 1676 when a Parisian company acquired a monopoly on the product. The company then used its immense power to sell the beverage via a giant tank strapped to the backs of roaming street vendors, as carts and platforms are too expensive compared to a lifetime of human labor. Today, lemonade is available in two distinct categories. Cloudy Lemonade is a homemade juice-like drink popular in North America and India that is characterized by its sweetness and cloudy appearance. Clear lemonade on the other hand is popular in the United Kingdom, Ireland, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. It is a lemon-flavored carbonated soft drink. Attempts to introduce each version to its opposite territory has had disastrous results. Huh. I never had, like, carbonate- like, like, I never, like, had someone say, Hey, you want some lemonade? I so- I give- I say sure. And what they send- or what they give me is, like, carbonated, so... Maybe that's, like, one of few instances of this game telling the truth with those. <laughs> so, iced tea and lemonade. What are we missing? We could get a couple more hold station things. I don't want to do sushi. <laughs> Have we made brownies yet? I don't think I have. Brownies, originally called Blueies, was invented in 1893 by colorblind chef Nick Ream. Operating under the misunderstanding that cocoa powder had strong healing and hallucinogenic properties, Ream sought to develop a small dessert full of cocoa powder that he could sell as a cure for everything that ails you. After being informed by his understudy that the treat was actually not blue, the name was changed and uh, Reem went on to open up Nick's Reem's Cream Dream Brownies, a small shop uh, from uh, which he sold his creation. 
While people quickly realized that brownies could neither improve health nor cause visions, no ca cause visions, those uh, who had tried them and survived their respective health concerns for unrelated reasons were hooked on the delicious chocolatey flavor. Its popular uh, popularity spread rapidly throughout the United States and Canada. So this is a okay. So that's it. Okay. Only makes four of those, so that I might have to keep an upkeep on that one. Hot and edible. Stays edible for a while, but I guess it doesn't really matter if, um... If you have a lot of, uh, customers. Simple food. Ratty food, pesty food. Menu rot. Huh. Munchies and never tipped on. I don't think I've made edamame yet. I think that's how it's pronounced. Edamame, steam, a stem bean, is often credited as being the world's first diet food. With wastelands expanding in the 13th century Japan, local entrepreneurs set out to capitalize on Japan's obesity epidemic. Numerous exercise plans were introduced, but to the country's dismay, the nation grew fatter. Finally, Tatsumi Saito, a young businessman who's, uh, whose company specialized in playing cards, baseball teams, and love, uh, love hotels, came to the rescue, noting that waiting was the key component of cards, baseball, and making love. Saito hypothesized that the uh, that by engineering a food that required a significant amount of time to eat, individuals would get tired of eating and consume less food. Saito was right, and by the end of the decade, the Japanese government declared the nation's obesity epidemic over. Since uh, the 1970s, doctors have attributed edamame to Japan's exceptional life expectancy. Today, edamame beans are enjoyed throughout the world by health uh, by health conscious individuals and those with inordinate amounts of free time. It, it just looks like green beans with salt on it. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. We'll see how much it makes later. So, five holding station items. Entree. For sale. No HS used. Yo, we haven't made steak yet. During the late 16th century, Dilbert I, the first <laughs> of England, was uh, d disturbed by what he felt was an increased an increase in heresy. Not wanting to rule over an unholy kingdom, King Dilbert rode through the land asking his subjects how they liked their steak. If they answered medium rare, Dilbert believed they are then to be blessed. If they answered well done, however, Dilbert believed they were either lying or had been possessed by holy forces. Unholy forces, both of which were punished by death. <laughs> in the years that followed, uh, tens of thousands of individuals were executed, and what the townspeople humorously referred to as being burned at the stake. <laughs> As the years progressed, fewer and fewer people were executed, and those who um, who genetically predisposed to liking their steaks well done had died out. I like my steak a bit more on the done side, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I know it's kind of a... Oh god. Porterhouse New York Strip and T-Bone. So it seems like, uh, like, uh, the, it... Oh god, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another recipe where, like, the cook time is kind of random. Also, this is all it takes? God, that is way easier than it was in the first game. It burns quickly, though. Huh. Stacked, Super Meat Boy, all-time classic. Dirty dish, menu rot, and variable cook time. Interesting. I liked making quesadillas earlier. What about milkshakes? Milkshakes were invented in the 1880s, then described as sturdy, healthful eggnog type of drinks with egg, uh, what, 
egg, whiskey, etc., served as a tonic as well as a treat. In 1922, however, the drink had transformed into a non-alcoholic drink made with uh, ice cream and chocolate, strawberries, and vanilla syrup. By the 1930s, milkshakes became an incredibly popular drink among children and young adults, who would often use malt, sh uh, malt shops as hangout spots when they would casually sell milkshakes. Unfortunately, the populated and relatively unhealthy qualities of milkshake led to an increase in lethargy, which would contribute to America's initial reluctance to enter into the Second World War. Though their popularity wa uh, waned in the decades that followed, many chefs in 2010 in the mid-2010s began experimenting with the drink by using uni uh, unique or exotic ingredients to create new flavors, such as coffee, bacon, pumpkin, and peanut butter and gel. That sounds gross. <laughs> this led to the second milkshake boom in 2024, which in turn led to an even greater sense of lethargy across the nation, ultimately contributing to America's poor performance during the Blue War. As a result, in uh, 2027, the United States government passed the Movers and Shakers Act, stating that all milkshakes sold must contain at least 40 milligrams of powdered... M methylidite as a means to prevent further inactivity during the times of war. Dude, just put caffeine in it. That's what every other dairy-based thing does. So, ice, milk, strawberry, chocolate scoop, cover. I think we've made this before, actually, just not in our own place. Rainy day. Ratty food, trashy food, fast cooker, menu rot. What a menu. <laughs> oh, not that menu. How many all-time classics do I have? If I put one more on, I could... Now, this is all new food, though. I'm gonna upgrade one of these, too. Trash takes a bit as well, so yeah. Okay. Oh god, putting that in my second slot, I just hit B twice and it's done. <laughs> You know, I've been talking with a friend about this game a little bit more. Uh, the same friend who I kind of got into the series and, like, enjoyed it way more than I thought he would. <laughs> I think I've come to the conclusion that I like the first game. I forgot to put the cover on. Oops. <laughs> it's... That I like the first game more than this. I mean, I love all of the food and all of the, like, lore building and stuff, that, and stuff like that. Like, the sheer number of food, but... In my opinion, I kind of like the more quality over quantity approach to the first game. Because in that game, there are only like 30 food items, but like their minigames were complex. The minigames like made you feel good for like doing them right. Here it's like, oh yeah, just hit one button and let it cook. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem that interesting to me by comparison. The strange thing is though, that this is like... In my opinion, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, though. Because, like, th my friend did actually like the second game more because of that kind of variety. Also because of some of the quality of life things this game does, such as, like, actually listing the stuff as opposed to writing out, like, a food order. Like, an actual food order. You know, that's kind of cool to me. Like, I don't know. Like, both games are really good. I just personally prefer the first one a little bit more. I think it's kind of cool that, like, both games are good for very different reasons. Okay, oil. This is the most time-consuming thing on our list. Oil, onion... Oh, hold on. Um, green, red, yellow. Beef. What was in that one? Uh, Mexican rice. I want to make Mexican rice in real life. <laughs> Peach, brew... Uh, that has to be done. That has to be done. Oh, I gotta do the rat task, too. Okay. Ice, milk, 
Chocolate caramel bits, I think that's what that stands for. I forgot to put the cover on again, oops! <laughs> uh, T-bone. Ice milk strawberry chocolate scoop cover. Don't forget to put the cover on! Ice milk cookie bits. Hard candy marshmallow vanilla scoop cover. That can be served. Wait. Oh, that can be served. Oil, onion, green, red, yellow, beef. I've never tried sizzling fajitas in real life. I, I screwed something up there. God, the... You, I, and then, like, it doesn't feel as elegant as it does in the first game, too. Okay, uh, T-Bone. Also, we gotta remake some sides real quick. Uh, those two can be served. Uh, six and nine. Get some more edamame. Is that how you say that word? I don't know. <laughs> God, I thought I made it so I didn't have to do these as often. Something went bad. Beef and chicken. Okay. The brisket went bad. Uh, more sausage links is what I had there. We might as well remix some of these because rush hour is coming up. Like, like there's anything else we can do right now. Everything else looks good. Okay. Roast beef, barbecue top bun. USBR. That is not... I, I guess you can do it quickly, but it doesn't really feel like you should be able to do it that quickly. <laughs> uh, sweet. I, I keep wanting to hit w W for sweet for some reason. Okay, those two can be served. T-bone. USBR. Okay, I guess I'm getting more used to it now. It still feels weird. <laughs> Oil, onion, green, red, yellow, beef. That can be served. Oil, onion, green, red, yellow, chicken. It always starts with those five things. Pick it up on, uh, on um, tips like that. Automatically makes stuff a lot easier. T-bone. Okay, ice, milk, chocolate chips, cookie bits, hard candy, chocolate scoop, cover. Okay, eight, four, five, two. Okay, U, B, R. We can make more... Uh, hold on. There's a... There's a... Oh god. I, I, hold on. <laughs> I feel like I almost got that. Okay, uh, sausage links. Something went bad, but we're almost done with the day, so can't be too hard to deal with. USBR. Alright, oil, onion, green, red, yellow, beef, chicken. That wasn't too bad. Three averages. Oh, pepper party. <laughs> Ooh. Interesting. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Send the cook serve delicious and you eat more than just fish. 
Are you or somebody you know a recent college graduate? Because we are inviting all recent college graduates with a bachelor's degree or greater to join us in the young adult populated and rapidly expanding field of unemployment. <laughs> Don't let that degree set and gather dust. Use it in a vain attempt to convince companies that your life experience is only a minor hurdle on your way to success at their business. No application is necessary. Simply search your job your the Search for jobs yourself and see just how far those four to six years of extra education get you in the real world. Oh god. <laughs> you know, I have a dual major myself in, um, computer... It, there, are, there are associate's degrees, they're not four years, because I don't think I'm smart enough to do a four-year. I have, like, a two-year degree in, like, um, computer science and new media, and I can kind of... Like, is it weird that, like, I think the best skill I got out of college, or, like, the most... The skill... Not the best skill, I'd say, but, like, the skill that I use the most in my day-to-day -day life is, like, learning how to use, um... a video editing software from new media. Like, I don't know, man. I've talked to a lot of people around my age, and, like, this is something a lot of people my age kind of relate to. It's like... <laughs> In, like, the 90s, like, getting an a uh, getting a degree, it felt like you were just set for life, but, like, not not anymore. Hmm. Employer of the Week, the Fire Department. Today's Turgon Employer of the Week award goes to the local fire department, uh, who have been real sports about our extremely questionable safety standards. Good hustle, guys. Hut, hut. Everyone knows about the new hit movie starring Charles... Montoyo, as his family persona, Mulch Kalu Kaluha, but did you know, the chase scene was with the two taxi cabs in a sunny Hawaii city was actually filmed in the rain, and the director demanded that the rain and water be CG'd out in post-production! <laughs> Edward Chudman is a, is a devout orthologist, uh, whose teachings include forbid uh, forbidding anyone from consuming a banana after 2 p.m. daily. So much of the bananas you see in Chudman eating are as a result of the CGI renders over the st stand-in fruits and veggies such as cookie uh, butternut squash. This is Dave G uh, Gulfi, producer's first major bomb, as co-star Dan Dudsworth, police chief, first major success in terms of box office, office performances. <laughs> Have you ever seen, like... I don't know, I've seen movies where, like, like arbitrary things like that were made for, like, religious reasons, but, like, nothing that dumb. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen a movie called The Message? I saw it back in, like, elementary school. And, like, it's a story about, like, um, Muhammad and his followers. Um, if you know anything about, about, um, that particular religion, you know that, like, actually depicting Muhammad is, is, is blasphemy. So you might be wondering how you make a movie about it. Well, how they did it was, like, they made the movie more about his friends and family, and anytime he had to be present, it was shot in first person, he was mute. It was... I don't know, like, the movie, like, fundamentally breaks a lot of first person don't sh uh, a lot of, like, show-don't-tell rules, but considering that showing is literally blasphemy in that context, it's... It's a really interesting movie to see. I don't know how people what people think of it nowadays, but I remember finding it kind of interesting back when I watched it as a kid. Seeking roommate. My friend kicked me out of his apartment last night, so I'm going to rent my own place now, and I'm looking for a roommate. I'm looking for a to room with someone who can cook, do laundry, and cover my half of the rent at a moment's notice. Reply if interested. To the residents of floor 53 and upwards, I would highly suggest the, the to cook serve de, the cook serve delicious restaurant residing on floor 52. The name says it all. To all residents level 51 and downwards who can actually afford to receive emails, please ignore this message and avoid the restaurant. <laughs> Man, um, and I thought the future couldn't get any more awesome. There's this new app called Eaten with Chums or something like that's a uh, like that. And when you're about to eat, you sit on your you sit your phone down on the table, press Eat with Me, and the video is streamed to a random person who is also eating. You'll never eat alone again. Totally gonna do uh, that when I'm eating my burger leftovers tonight. Man, I don't even need to leave the house ever again. <laughs> oh no. I think we've read that one. I know a fellow caffeine addict when I see one. You are the one th uh, you are the only thing in the coffee shop that didn't appear to be rapidly shaking because your caffeine induced co convulsions were perfectly in sync with mine. My already grand heart knew a new event to you at, at, at the sight at the sight of you. Now the only thing I crave more than a hot cup of bla uh, black roast is to add a few shots of you into my mix. Contact me if you want to see uh, what 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 our lives could be when we brew together. <laughs> my god. Seriously, 
Most theaters give you free refills on popcorn, so be sure to grab a bag when you see the trash. Give it a little rinse and save yourself some moolah. <laughs> it always works. I don't remember doing this with drinks, though. You can never get uh, the aftertaste of what was originally in there, uh, in there out, no matter how much you rinse it. Don't do that. I know you're feeling down from the upper floor residents being so mean, but don't worry, I've got a plan to get rid of them! Oh no! Did you see the documentary about the Gorilla Planet theme park? Apparently gorillas are nice and kind creatures, but that makes uh, for boring entertainment, so at night the employees chain them up and slap them in the face of wet rags soaked in fish juice repeatedly until they get really mad. They also give them bananas, but uh, one of the bananas is actually filled with a uh, mush- uh, filled with mu mushed up and reshaped banana peppers, and they don't know it until they bite off the uh, bite off a big piece, which gets them all riled up. That's why they're so ferocious looking during the day when visitors see them in the cages and stuff. Man, that's just wrong. I'm never gonna go back to that park again. I hope they go out of business. I read that one. Haiku. Bryson is the best. He's better than all the rest, especially you. Here's some money. I need you to uh, hang out with me for 40 plus hours a week doing whatever I tell you to do, whether you like it or not. If you don't do exactly as I tell you to, I'll stop giving you money, so you and your family will probably starve. Welcome to the real world. My god. In the last new week's newsletter, we posted a recipe called Required Polenta. Regrettably, we mistakenly wrote Placenta instead. So, to answer your email, no, the recipe does not require a placenta. And to those of you who are sending in hot tips about how to source one, please stop. It's making us very uncomfortable. <laughs> Dear Mario, I, I misread Pinch of Salt for Pint of Salt. Will you still eat this cake? <laughs> to those of you who keep complaining about our thrice-hourly <laughs> newsletters, deal with it. The world, of, uh, the world of bricks is an interesting place, and you'd all be better off reading our long-winded editorials. If you'd like to unsubscribe from the newsletter, please create a new email address. Okay, I think that's enough email for now. Uh, let's see some of the restaurants we unlocked, or I unlocked off-screen. I think I unlocked this one first, but, like, this one just... Welcome to Tasteville. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. Sick of all them fancy high flottin' restaurants in, the, in his local area, Earl Finewood set out to create his own restaurant in spite of what he in spite of what he loved the most. Good ol' America! His complete lack of only culinary capabilities didn't stop Finewood from creating his own menu in Ameri of American staples, and the opening day would uh, long be remembered as a, co as a complete disaster when major food critics slammed the food as distasteful and dull. Finewood directly attacked them by questioning their patriotism. While true culinary fans know, uh, know to stay away from the gar uh, the, gar the garage expensive restaurants filled with food that lacks any sensible semblance of planning and thought, Tasteville's uh, supporters feel both inspired and comforted by Finewood's constant attacks on food critics who don't know nothing about what they're saying. Uh, one notable feature of Tasteville is it is a collection of American flags with 50 white stars on them, as opposed to the memorial flag with the proper 38 white stars. Nine gold stars and three black stars, which was adopted after the Blue War. Wait, what? What happened to the states? Wait! <laughs> what does the different color stars mean? Uh, also, DC still isn't a state, really? <laughs> God, they, they gotta make DC a state so we can be at 51. Then we'll truly be indivisible. Anyway, it looks like... Yeah, it's all just, like, stereotypically American food. That is hilarious. <laughs> well, let's try it. Welcome to Tasteville, American guys. <laughs> I'm up to 80 gold medals now, which I'm kind of proud- Oh my god, this freak out! <laughs> I'm American myself, this is hilarious, I love it. <laughs> You know, is the developer of this game American? I guess I never really bothered to look that up or anything. I don't know why, but I love watching, like, non-Americans try to emulate American culture because, like, they, they really over-exaggerate it and it's just really hilarious to me. <laughs> I love when anime does it especially, I don't know. You guys ever played the game Yokai Watch 3? I, I haven't finished it, but, like, I played, like, the first few hours. I gotta get back to it at some point, but like, so like, in the first two Yokai Watch games, the games do kind of the, the Ace Attorney thing, where like, 
they're set in Japan, but when they localized it, they just called it America instead because they thought it would sell better. But the plot of um, of Yokai Watch Three is they actually move to America. So what they did in the in the North American version of the game is they had them move to a fictional uh, a fictional country instead called a BBQ. And instead of there being a language barrier because they're moving from Japan to America, they just have everyone speak American, but in, in like on incomprehensible like southern accents, and it's it's really hilarious. Like. <laughs> Make some more mashed potatoes. Also, there's like a bunch of yokai based off like American folklore too, which is really funny. <laughs> God, I want Yokai Watch to do well, like financially. That that series always feels like I could go places, but it just doesn't perform that well ever, which is which sucks a lot, because I really like the aesthetic and like <laughs> how those games play. It's not just- it doesn't just play like Pokemon. Like, it plays a lot different than you'd expect it to play. I'm gonna make some more of this while we wait for those burgers to finish. Oh, that was a lot of burgers. Uh, what's the other one we got? Baked potato? We'll make baked potatoes. Oops. Uh, I think I... Uh-oh. That should, that, should, that should work out. I guess I've heard the, the term freedom fries. I heard it once, and I thought it was, like, pretty funny. Like, oh yeah, we call them french fries when we serve them in America. But, like... <laughs> Apparently the reason, like, there actually is, like, ah, oh, dang it, um, lettuce Swiss egg pretzel. Apparently there's, like, a political story behind that name. I thought it was just, like, a meme or something. Apparently back during, like, one of the world wars, I, I think, I gotta look up the story again, but, like, America got really mad at France for, like, political reasons. Again, I gotta look up the story. I'm being very vague because I do not know the full story right now right off the top of my head. But, like, in protest, a bunch of Americans decide to call French fries Freedom Fries instead. Which is just... It's so petty. <laughs> it's so American. It's such an American thing to do. <laughs> Thought I messed it up for a second. Egg pretzel. Uh, we need more burgers. Uh-oh. Uh, broccoli onion. Uh, wait. Parmesan is pea! Okay, that's what I've been messing up. Vinaigrette, crouton, mushroom, tomato, broccoli onion. Oh, we're out of... Uh, mix some mashed potatoes. God, Americans do love their potatoes, don't they? <laughs> I guess I never really thought of that before. What is pickles? P. Okay, we haven't had pickles today somehow. done with the day. That's screwed. I'm just gonna, yeah, we'll do that one manually. I'm that 
that weird guy that puts a pineapple on my burger? <laughs> it's... There we go! Ah, oh, one average? Really? Oh my god. You know, I've been blown away that I've been still constantly unlocking items. Like, how many items are in this game? I haven't changed my lobby at all, personally, but... <laughs> Maybe I should, though. I'm gonna be honest, I, th I feel like I'm almost done with this LP anyway, so... And I really like this. <laughs> Oh, I, I got an idea or something I could add. Hold on. Is it objects? Columns? No. Is it art? I want to put up, like, that, like, space thing I got. Where would that be? Would it be walls? God, I hate this UI still. <laughs> I like that aesthetic. Ah, oh, screw it. <laughs> I think the next one I unlocked was Secret of the Deep. Uh, it's seafood, obviously, but... Ooh, lobster! I haven't made lobster in this game yet. Aye, Secret of the Deep is your place to go for fish. We have all the fish. Big fish, little fish, long fish, sword fish, and slow fish. Here at Secret of the Deep, the only secret is how we managed to get our hands on such an endless supply of so many kinds of fish, and boy wouldn't the authorities like to know. Climb aboard and discover why so many people trust Secret of the Deep with their birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, funerals, and mitzvahs. Secret of the Deep deflavors at surface prices. <laughs> that is the best advertisement I've heard for a store here yet. <laughs> hmm. There are two items here I haven't made yet. I don't... Lobster is... Yeah, lobster is there. I don't know what, like, this is. Like... Oh, that must be, like, crab legs or something. That should be, like, oysters or something? I don't think I've made that either. It's, like, pasta in a deep dish. I'm gonna do this one first, actually. Why not? Oh! Everything- there were no whole item items. Oh, this'll be a pain to do. Uh, <laughs> okay. Pasta. So, bow tie is B. Oh, this is gonna- Oil chicken. Wait, 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 wait! Fusili is you. Oil sausage. Okay, this one we've done before. THB season. Uh, you. You gotta assemble it too. Okay, so chicken, parmesan is still R, Alfredo is A. Tomato, sausage, parmesan, tomato. Bow tie, just B. Okay, this is more what I was expecting when uh, we unlocked uh, pasta earlier. 
All right, so par oh, Parmesan tomato. How the heck does this work? Coconut, white wine, tomato, mussels lid. So that's mussels. That's still N. Spinach peppers. Chili, which is H. Mussels in lid. Steamed mussels. So I'm going to make some more of this real quick. Okay, mackerel. What is Z? Mussels lid. It looks like there's no extra steps to steamed mussels, too. Steamed mussels doesn't seem that bad, actually. Curry, mussels lid. Getting the right, um... Six, okay. Tomato. That fur... I forgot to put the mussels in! <laughs> Oops. I put the lid on, I couldn't take it off. Okay, uh... Oh, I like pen pasta. That's my favorite kind. <laughs> Did you just get a plate of, like, just sauce? <laughs> just bow tie. Yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> you oil chicken. Okay, seven, four, onion, chicken, mushroom, pesto. God, I hate... Mushrooms. Parmesan. Wait. Oh no. Uh. Sorry. I. Uh, bacon. Broccoli. Chicken. Parmesan. Alfredo. Oh, I like Alfredo. I'm just sure that I hate wet food, but like I do like Alfredo sauce. Chicken. Parmesan. Spinach. Pesto. Pesto's kind of nice if it's not too runny. Okay, don't screw this up this time. Muscles first and then the lid. I like that, that you can screw that up just by accidentally putting the lid on. <laughs> Alright, uh, H, muscles lid. It's always, it starts, it ends with M-S, always. To just, oh my god. <laughs> okay, that one was my fault. I mean, it's always my fault, but... I kind of like steamed mussels. I don't know. Uh, Z. Mussels lid. Alright, onion, bacon, broccoli, parmesan pesto. I like sausage in my pasta a lot. Red snapper. Okay, uh, let's remake these real quick because rush hour is starting soon. Coconut, mussels lid. All right, uh, chili, mussels lid. Red, red sauce, mussel lid. Uh, you, O S. Mackerel. Right, that, uh, chili, mussels lid, red snapper, what is curry, you, mussels lid. Okay, sausage, mushrooms, pepper, alfredo. Yep, that's it. Okay. Albacore. Ah, uh, we're almost done with the day, so I think that'll be the last thing I make.
Yeah, that'll last us till the end of the day. You know, I kind of like Bowtie, too. You guys like Shells? I feel like Shells people are hit and miss on. I don't know. I think Shells works really good in Mac and Cheese, but, like, really not much else. Onion, Spinach, Peppers. Onion, R, all lives. That's our first one of all lives, okay. And this steamed mussels is the last one of the day, okay. Here, take all of our broccoli too while we're at it. <laughs> okay, that went okay. I think I got silver for that. Hmm. Next is absolutely. An upper class restaurant filled with nothing but soup. Oh god. Absolutely. That was the idea behind the Absolutely restaurant founded in 1950 by Jenna Delaney, uh, a wealthy real estate broker who was ready to invest her and her missing husband's life saving into a new venture. Though many of her friends and family called her crazy, Delaney preserved a uh, Preserved, going as far as to build the first absolutely restaurant herself, brick by brick, which led not only to several OSHA violations, but also deliber um, delivering arthritis for Delancey. Despite these setbacks, the business stood strong for decades. In 2005, the successful chain's image wavered when the remains of Mr. Delancey's body were found in entombed in the original restaurant. A restaurant with dark secrets? Absolutely. But one that would ne uh, would let a little foul play get in the way of a world of world class soup? Absolutely not. So it's all soup like oh god, okay. I mentioned before I'm not really a soup guy, so. We've made plenty of these actually. That's not a soup. <laughs> Guys, is is club sandwich a soup? <laughs> I found a a sandwich. Hold on, okay. I found a sandwich, um. I found a san a book of sandwich recipes that I kid you not has a recipe on how to make, uh, cheese fondue. <laughs> I, which which kind of broke me when I first saw that. So this doesn't seem that bad so far. Also, is it just me, or is this one of those, um... Is this one of those uh, restaurants where, like, most of the items are holding station items? Okay, okay. So do you remember Slammy's, the, like, uh, the, like, barbecue place that we unlocked a little while ago? There was a day there, a bit late in, where every item was prepared in a holding station. And I don't know why. This was, like, super unique and, like, weird because, um... Okay, first off, you just, like, did the missions, and then for, like, for the next uh, the next several hours, whenever someone came up, you just hit the button, and then they went away. That might sound like it's easy, but what that would often happen, or cause to happen, is you were doing so many orders that the, uh, the, the chores would just pile up nonstop. I swear during a rush hour, I had, like, five trash, um like, trash mashing minigames come up, which broke, which really, like, was really hard. I feel like I was gonna break my M key during that. <laughs> it was a very unusual experience. Oh, it, I think it's actually going to happen here, too. Okay, um... Fish, carrots, clam, oil chicken. One, three... Tropics brew. We're out of something else. Gumbo. Rice, shrimp, beans, oil, sausage. Okay, that's gonna give us some time. Meat, green peppers, corn. It's gonna happen. Look at that. <laughs> Make some more. Fish, carrot, clam bits, oil, chicken. You'll love to see it. Um, Texas brew. Also, it. <laughs> Half these people are getting, like, a side of gumbo with their gumbo, I just realized that. Or a side of clam chowder with their clam chowder. 
As much as I don't like soup-like items, I do actually really like clam chowder. I blame it on being a mainer. <laughs> That's a very mainer. That was a very mainer-esque food. Okay, most of our food looks like it's gonna run out, like, yeah, before the second rush hour starts, which is really convenient. Lobster, fish, celery, carrots, clam bits, onion, pork. Shrimp. The fact that lobster is sometimes O and sometimes B really screws me up. Oh, screwed it up. Um, okay, hold on. Fish, carrots, clam, oil chicken. Good. Yeah, look, I swear we're doing more chores than mini games during this day because of this. Now imagine this, but with like. But with like 70% buzz. <laughs> For like base, not like with the. Uh, with the. Oh god, we're going to make more soon. Not with the, uh, with like, with like that many and also like 10 prep stations. You know, I feel like I am getting more used to 10, but I, I still don't think like upwards of 14 is physically possible for me. <laughs> it's weird, like the first game is tough because the mini games are more complicated and have more to do with them. But like the second game is tougher because they give you like 14 freaking prep stations. Like I still can't get over that. I have to make some more clam chowder soon, too. Okay, peach is E. Alright, make some more of this. Uh, lobster, fish, celery, carrots, clam, oil, pork. Just l look at that! <laughs> Imagine you go up to a restaurant, they say we have a wait time, and they go, oh, like, how many people need to leave before they come in? They go, no, no, it's not like that. We, we just need to finish this, uh, this gumbo, and then, uh, like, all of you can come in at once. <laughs> oh my god. Uh-oh. Uh, lobster, fish... Celery, carrot, clam, oil, pork. Oh, leveled up. Uh, sweet tea brew. I don't want to risk this. Hold on. Just in case, you know? Just in case we get two more gumbo orders just out of nowhere at the last second. I don't want to stay here, like, until midnight. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. What'd I tell you? We're gonna get one more, like, a minute before we close. Nope, okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> I actually got a perfect on that, which is pretty cool. 100 bronze medals, too, which is nice. Wow, what rank do you unlock these two at? Huh. Well, I think that'll be it for this episode. Next time, we'll see what this one is. Um... I'll see you folks later. Thanks for watching.